how to calculate the empirical formula when given the mass. Good day, everybody. Once again, we are back together. All right, so today we are looking at some stoichiometry, and it's important for you to know how to calculate the empirical formula of a substance. Now, remember, what is in, uh, an empirical formula? It is the basic ratio, right, of each of the atoms in a compound. So, uh, for instance, if you look at H2O, right, so H2O, this would be an empirical formula and a molecular formula. So it tells you that for every two parts of hydrogen, there's only one part of oxygen, right? So it is an empirical formula for the presence of hydrogen and oxygen in the water molecule, right? So we're going to take a question and we're going to use this question in order for us uh, to, um, you know, explore this concept a little bit further. And please, ladies and gents, if you're struggling with chemistry, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us. Our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za or you can get uh, the more information on the description of this video. All right, let's get right into it, right? So they say to us, we've got menthol, which is a substance uh, we can smell in mentholated cough drops, uh, which is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, right? Now they say to us, during combustion, now remember what combustion is, uh, it's when we are reacting something with oxygen, right? So they say during combustion, uh, of a 9.984 gram sample of menthol, it is found that 28.160 grams of carbon dioxide and 11.520 grams of H2O is produced. Right, now, initially what they want us to do, which by the way, we are going to use uh, to find out the sample or rather the empirical formula. Right, now, firstly, they want us to calculate uh, the mass of carbon in carbon dioxide. Now, ladies and gents, what you are going to do whenever you are taking this uh, calculation, firstly, what we are going to do is, right, let's find out of this 28.160 grams of carbon dioxide, how many parts of it are composed of carbon, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a percentage. Now, remember, we need the periodic table. So we need to know what is the molar mass of carbon, and we need to know what the molar mass of oxygen is, right? And remember, we've got two oxygens in this case. So if we go to our periodic table, right, you can see carbon has got a molar mass of 12, and oxygen has a molar mass of 16, right? Okay, so let's use those. So we're going to say right. So we know this guy has got a molar mass of 12 and this guy has a molar mass of 16. But remember, there's two parts of oxygen or there's two atoms of oxygen. So we're going to multiply this by two in this case, right? So let's get the molar mass of carbon dioxide. And so we're going to add carbon and two oxygens. So we get uh, 12 plus uh, 16 times 2, which is 32, all right? So, and that will give us 44 grams per mole, right? So this is the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now, remember, so let's find out how many carbons are there. So we're going to take the molar mass of carbon divided by the molar mass of the entire compound, which is carbon dioxide, and we're going to convert that into a percentage, right? So we multiply that by 100. So what do we do there? Right, molar mass of carbon, that's 12, right? You remember, divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, we found that to be 44, and we multiply that by 100 so that we convert it into a percentage. So I'm going to say 12 divided by 44, and we multiply this by 100, right? And I get the percentage to be 27.27%. Now I'm going to leave it in that form, right? Uh, so that is the percentage presence of carbon 
in carbon dioxide. So in this case, I want to find out, remember the question said, calculate the mass of carbon in carbon dioxide. So I'm going to take the percentage presence, right, and multiply it by the, um, um, the mass of the entire compound. So in this case, which means the mass of carbon, right, so remember the mass of carbon, this will be the percentage present. So it will be 27.27 over 100. So remember that when you have a percentage, it's always divided by 100, multiplied by the mass of the entire compound, which is 28.160. So that's multiplied by 28.160 grams. And that will give us the percentage of carbon. Right. So, uh, in fact, I shouldn't have removed that. Uh, so our answer, right, remember that is um, divided by 100, right? And this is multiplied by 28.160. And I get a mass of 7.68 grams. So which means the mass of carbon in carbon dioxide will be 7.6 grams at 7.68 grams out of that 28.160 grams that we had. All right, now um, let's go on to the next question. And by the way, please keep in mind, we were going to do this either way because we want to find out the empirical formula of this menthol um, uh, compound. Okay, right. Now they say to us, use relevant calculations to determine the empirical formula of menthol. So we want to find out first, what would be the percentage of uh, hydrogen, of carbon, of hydrogen and oxygen, right? And in this case, that will give us the empirical formula, right? So we've already found out the mass of carbon, okay? So let's do the same with hydrogen, okay? So we're going to do the same because we were given in this case H2O, they told us that for H2O, we've got 11.520 grams, right, that were produced. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, the percentage presence of hydrogen, because remember, uh, we do need that. So uh, the percentage presence of hydrogen in H2O, right? So in this case, I'm going to simply say, right, so remember... We said, I'm going to take the molar mass of hydrogen, right? Um, so that will be the molar mass of H2O, okay? That's two parts hydrogen, so that will be two times one, right? Remember, hydrogen has got a molar mass of one, okay? And oxygen 16, you remember that? So I'm going to say two times one plus oxygen, which is 16, and that should give us 18 grams per mole. Right, now, the percentage of hydrogen, right? Okay, so percentage of hydrogen in H2O will be, remember, we take the molar mass of hydrogen divided by the molar mass of H2O, right, the ratio between them, and in this case, we're going to find this is two molar mass of uh, molar mass of hydrogen. We've got two of those hydrogens there, right? Divided by molar mass of H two O. That's eighteen, right? You can say multiplied by hundred, but all we need is that ratio, right? So that's two divided by eighteen, and I get zero point one 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 one. Okay, so that's 0 0.11 recurring, right? Or you could say that's 11.11% and remember, uh, you do that by multiplying by 100, right? In fact, just to make it easy, let's do that. Multiply that by 100 and that will give us a percentage, 11.11%. Right, now what are we going to do? We're going to make sure that we find out the mass. So the mass of hydrogen in H2O will be 
the percentage presence that's 11.11 over 100 okay this is multiplied by the mess the total mess that we have of h2o that's 11.520 right so that's 11.520 and uh, how much do we get of that in fact let me say uh, so that's 0 0.11 uh, 0 0.1111 right that's multiplied by 11.52 and i get that mass to be 1.28 grams so which means the number or the mass of hydrogen that we've got right in uh, that was formed was 1.28 grams now remember ladies and gents what do what does menthol compose of what is it composed of right it's made of carbon it's made of hydrogen and it's made of oxygen now we've just found out that the mass of carbon right remember we found it in the previous example 7.68 grams right the mass of hydrogen 1.2 Two eight grams, which means the only thing that we're left with now is oxygen. Now, notice in this case, we were given the total sample mass of menthol to be 9.984. Now, if it is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, right, and we found out the mass of carbon and hydrogen respectively, meaning the only thing that is left now would be oxygen. Right, so let's do that. So which means now, the mass of oxygen, to find out the mass of oxygen, I'm going to do this um, differently here, okay? I'm going to say the mass of oxygen will be equal to the total mass of the sample, right? Uh, that was 9.984, 9.984. Right, subtract the mass of carbon minus 7.68, and I'm going to also subtract the mass of uh, hydrogen that's 1.28. Right, and what do we get for that mass? Right, so in this case, I am going to get a mass of right, so I'm going to say 9.984 minus 7.8. Eight, uh, six eight rather minus 1.28 and I get a mass of 1.024 grams of oxygen right now ladies and gents all that is left for us to do is to divide each one of them remember when given the mass in chemistry you divide by the molar mass to get the number of moles right so I'm going to divide carbon by 12 I'm going to divide hydrogen by 1, and I'm going to divide oxygen by 16, right? So that I get that into moles, right? So let's do that. So we're going to say this is 7.68 divided by 12. That gives us 0 0.64, right? And... We've got 1.28 divided by 1. That gives us 1.28. And oxygen, we've got 1.024 divided by 16. Right? And we've got 0.064. Right? So these are now the number of moles. Ladies and gents, once we are here, we are almost done because we are going to divide by the smallest number that you've got remember we are trying to find the ratio of each right in the compound so the smallest number that i have is 0 0.064 so i'm going to divide each of them by 0 0.064 okay so that's 0 0.064 and so uh, let's see that will give me one Hydrogen, let's see, 1.28 divided by 0 0.064. That gives us 20, 
right? And what about carbon? Okay, so we've got 0 0.64 divided by 0 0.064. Uh, that gives us 10. Right, now ladies and gents, we've come to uh, the end of this question. So which means the percentage or rather the empirical formula of menthol would be C10, H20, and one oxygen, right? 10 parts of carbon, 20 parts of hydrogen, and one oxygen right so which means those are the number of uh, atoms that you'd find uh, in their basic ratios right now i love the last question because remember there's a difference between the empirical formula and the molar uh, the molecular formula right so sometimes we may find the empirical formula not being the same as the molecular formula, but remember, in terms of their ratios, they should exactly be the same. Now they say to us, the molar mass of menthol is 156 grams per mole. Determine the molecular formula of menthol. Now, let's do this. Let's find out in this empirical formula, right, what would be the molar mass if we were to convert this into uh, the molar mass, okay? So that means we've got 10 times the molar mass of carbon plus 20 times the molar mass of hydrogen plus one, the molar mass of oxygen, right? So 10 times the molar mass of carbon Remember, that's 12, so that's 10 times 12 plus 20 times 1, the molar mass of hydrogen, plus 1 times 16, right? So uh, let's find that out quickly. Uh, 10 times 12, that gives us 120, right? Plus 20 plus 16, and so that gives us uh, 150 six grams per mole all right ladies and gents and note in this case that the molar mass is equal to uh, i mean the molar mass of menthol is equal to the molar mass that we found from the empirical formula so therefore it means that those ratios are actually uh, equal so therefore the molar mass of menthol will actually be equal to, all right, this will be equal to um, C10, H20, and oxygen. Now, perhaps you might be wondering why, what did we do exactly there? Right, suppose they had said to us, right, that the molar mass of uh, menthol, let's say, was given as, um, let's say, 312, right? 312 grams per mole. I'm just making an example there, right? So now, in calculating, rather, uh, let's do this. So the molar mass that would have been given, right, let's say, was 312. So in this case, it means once I calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula and find 156, then I was going to say, well, the molar mass that's given, right? Uh, the molar mass that's given divided by the molar mass from our empirical formula, okay? And in this case, that would have given me 312 divided by 156. And you'd see that this is equal to 2. If that were the case, then it means that the, um, the actual numbers, okay, the actual compounds or uh, atoms are twice that in the, molar, in the empirical formula. So it means, therefore, the molar mass of menthol 
would have been C10, okay? I mean C20, so it's two times that number. It would have been H40 and it would be O2, right? So meaning you multiply everything by that factor that you got over there, right? But in this case, we found that they were equal, right? So that means that uh, if we were to do this, it would have been 156 over 156, which gives us 1. And so therefore, the molar mass of menthol, okay, would be equal to the empirical formula, which would be C10, H20, oxygen, okay, and 1 oxygen. Right, and that is how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. I'm going to show you in our next video how to calculate the empirical formula when you are given percentage presence, okay? Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. And remember, chemistry is fun. I will uh, prove to you that you can actually love chemistry far much more than you love the physics part of physical science. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you next time. Shop shop.